Hey there everyone and welcome to another episode of Friday Fish Files. Today we're going to be talking about the fish that inspired me to start this video series and that is the Amazon puffer fish. Or if you want to be technical, uh, the scientific name for the fish is Colomysis ocellus. Now all the Amazon puffers that you see in fish stores or if you order them online, they're going to be wild caught. Um, as of right now, no one has successfully bred these guys in captivity. Uh, they are found throughout the Amazon River Basin, uh, ranging from Brazil, Colombia, Peru, and Ecuador. You're usually going to catch these guys in places like floodplain lakes, fast flowing rapids, and uh, places like sandbars. Now, because these guys are wild caught, uh, and they have not yet been bred in captivity. We're still kind of finding out a lot about these fish. And it's certainly probably one of the most interesting fish I have in my tanks. As far as temperature range, these guys do good in about 68 degree to 78 degree Fahrenheit water. Uh, pH is usually gonna range anywhere from 5.5 to 8.0. They can tolerate a wide range there. And as far as hardness goes, they can tolerate anywhere from 36 to uh, 268 parts per million hardness. So they are a pretty adaptable fish. Now they can be sensitive to toxins in the water like ammonia and nitrite. So it's best to get these guys when you have a well-established tank that's been up and running for a good bit of time with good filtration. And water changes, you're probably going to be wanting to do 25% to 30% weekly just because they can be quite a messy fish when it comes to eating. These guys are active swimmers, so they do prefer a tank with a larger footprint. That way they can freely swim around. Um, they have been recorded to reach about five inches, although usually in a home aquarium, it's three to four inches max. When you set up a tank for your puffers, you wanna make sure you have uh, lots of things to kind of keep them active and moving them around and searching. Uh, so you want to try to include some driftwood, some caves. Um, they do well in heavily, in heavily planted tanks, um, but they, you want to make sure they have places to explore. They can get bored, and being wild caught fish, if they get too bored, they're just going to swim against the glass a lot of the time. So with these guys going into a well-established tank, you, chances are you're probably going to have some fish in there already. Um, now you're, wanna, you're going to want to be choosy about their inhabitants. They are known as a peaceful puffer, um, but they can have their quirks here and there. Now in one instance, I have seen my puffers go after uh, one of my tetras. And although it was interesting to watch, it, it was sad at the same time. You know, I, lo I did lose the tetra. Not much will survive a puffer bite. Um, but I'll show you a picture of the tetra they did get just because it is interesting and it goes along with Kind of their hunting behavior. So the tetra on the screen is one of my Ruminos tetras and as you can see it had some big chunks taken out of it. Um, now I did witness them go after this tetra like I was saying and, and it was quite interesting. It was very it was a very targeted attack. Uh, it, it went after the tail fin first kind of I guess you can kind of say to immobilize the fish and then the next thing I saw it do was take, uh, take a chunk out of the head of the fish, um, which it really aimed toward. So it was almost as if it knew it was aiming for the brain per se. And then the last thing it did was take out the eyes. Uh, now those were the only parts of the fish it actually bit on. It didn't go ap after um, the guts for last, lack of a better word or even any of the, the meat of the fish. It, it seemed to just go after the brains and the eyes, and then after that, it just lost interest. So hopefully this serves as an example. Um, they are a peaceful puffer, but for some reason in this one instance, they went after Tetras. I haven't had the trouble before that, and I actually haven't had the trouble since. So it was might've been just a one-off kind of occurrence. And when it comes to feeding these guys, uh, they are a bit of a, a timid eater. 
So if you have them with some more robust schooling fish, like larger tetras, or even some larger cichlids, they're probably gonna stand a chance to get bullied, uh, especially by the larger cichlids if they start breeding. All right, and what should you feed your Amazon puffers? Uh, well, I've had mine take a variety of foods. Uh, one main thing you're gonna wanna watch is you're gonna wanna make sure they get a, a hard shelled food in their system. Um, mainly, this is gonna be snails and uh, freeze dried krill works for this. And that's mainly gonna serve the purpose of grinding down their beaks because they do grow quite rapidly. Uh, there are instances where people have had to trim their beaks and if you go around YouTube you can actually see several videos. It can actually be quite a stressful process for you and the fish. You have to knock it out with uh, clove oil or another anesthetic, trim the teeth and then bring them back out. But they'll also go for a variety of other foods. I feed mine often uh, some frozen blood worms, frozen brine shrimp, mysis shrimp, uh, and I've even had one on a rare occasion take rapashi. So you've got your new puffers, you figured out what you want to feed them, uh, you figured out their tank setup. But before you put them in that tank, I highly suggest quarantining them for a period of at least two to three weeks. And in this time, you do want to deworm them. Uh, being wild caught, they will have picked up quite a few parasites and they'll come in with them. For my treatment, I put them through um, a round of EM erythromycin and general cure. Um, the puffers are known to be a little bit sensitive to medicines, but I used a full dose on them and they did perfectly well. And when it comes to breeding these guys, like I said, it's never been done in captivity. Um, they actually are very difficult to sex. I've never been able to do it definitively. Um, I did kind of notice that between my two puffers, there was a difference in size and length. Um, and so based on that, I was kind of able to maybe guess that I had a female and a male puffer. Um, but like I said, I didn't know for sure. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. This was a little bit of a longer one, uh, but with this fish, there's just not that much information out there. So I figured I would put out as much as I can, especially everything based off of personal experience. So let me know down below in the comments if any of you have kept Amazon puffers and let me know any of your experiences or any other information you might have. Did I leave anything out of this video? Let me know down below and remember to leave a like and subscribe for more.